Okay, so I thought I'd share with you uh, my unpacking and building and flying of the Airworks Extra 300 6090. I'm going to put a uh, 20cc Aerovat engine in it, uh, gas engine, uh, effectively the DLE 20cc. So uh, this will be broken up into parts, but uh, next will be the unpacking. So this is how the box comes packed. Uh, we have the main components in this side, which I'm going to start taking out. And, and uh, wheel pants there. With the cowling and uh, the main fuselage there. So these out. So there's the uh, fuselage in the box as you can see, uh, all comes very well packed, uh, there's the other components sitting on the bench, nicely packed in uh, protective wrapping. No damage, everything looks fine, I haven't checked the hardware yet, I'll uh, let you know if there's anything missing. So parts uh, all check out apart from the uh, servo tubes. I'll uh, just list them here how they're the incorrect sizes. Um, I'll wait and see whether uh, they're actually sufficient for what I need. But uh, whatever the list on the in the manual is not the sizes they supplied. So here are all the uh, the parts count. The only other thing I'm a little bit disappointed in is the finish on the uh, cow and not the um, canopy. As you can see, it's not not a great finish. So, having uh, used my iron now to seal it, I'll seal the uh, wing and the fuselage and the horizontal stab and rudder. Uh, it's time to start to install the ailerons and the uh, servos for the wings. The ailerons in place and uh, the pins in place. I'm going to measure, or actually make sure I'm square to the uh, end of the wing. I'm going to remove all the pins, push it nice and tight together, and then uh, CA the hinges. Okay, one last check of the square, make sure it's flush to the end of the wing, and then apply CA to the hinges. And so on. And so as you can see, I've installed the first aileron, uh, aileron servo. I ended up using uh, some stock uh, push rods, which is sort of a real waste to waste that whole long push rod. But that's pretty straightforward. Uh, just put the horn in and uh, grind off, grind off the back end. That's a little bit too long, and then just uh, bend it to another degree and put the keeper on. Pretty straightforward. So there we have the two wings together set up with the ailerons working, aileron servos installed. Well they're of course not adjusted so they're just a little bit a uh, little bit out at the moment. Okay the next part is to insert the horizontal stabilizer which is where I ran up against another problem which would be great as you can see if it had been trimmed correctly but it uh, looks like the uh, vertical stab uh, portion hasn't been trimmed correctly so uh, that's the next thing I'm going to have to do is to take my saw and just trim that last little bit off so it'll fit through there so as you can see with that little piece trimmed out the uh, 
horizontal stabilizer would now fit in place. Not what really I would expect from uh, an expensive model like this. And now as you can see it's time to put the horizontal stabilizer on. Uh, I haven't actually glued it yet, just matched it up. Um, instead of using clips as it suggests in the manual, I use a little system that uh, has a string that hooks in and just keeps tight against there and then I measure the distance between there and the wing tip. And of course uh, a quick check to make sure it's nice and level there. Looks good to me. And the next thing I have is uh, another piece of it's actually a piece of fishing line and it's important to use some fishing line that doesn't stretch as you won't get a very good reading and then I put two knots in it. I don't know if you can see that. Actually I'd like to put one knot but I ended up with two so it measures right up to the edge there and then I do the same the other side to make sure they're equal before I glue it. So now I fitted the elevator and the elevator servo also the horn just got to fit the push rod now So there we have the uh, elevator servo installed and working. Obviously the throws haven't been set up yet. Well now the rudder's in place and I've uh, put the CA on it and it's, the hinges are drying. Uh, everything great, nice and level there and uh, looks pretty good there until you get to the back and oh! Looks like a little bit of a problem in the manufacturing here. A little bit too much of a gap, but still shouldn't uh, shouldn't do too much. Probably won't notice it either because it's down the bottom. And the rudder pull pull is now uh, adjusted. I'm oh, sorry, uh, not adjusted, but. Okay, now the wheels go on, that's pretty straightforward with the axle bolted on, the uh, carbon fiber gear and I'm actually going to leave the uh, wheel pants off for now. You guys are really too much and I want to introduce you to the, the guys individually in the Who because you never get to know their name, you know them as the Who. Everybody says Who and you say, you know, what's your, so what's your name? Pete. 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 And where are you from, Pete? London. From London? Yeah. London where? London, England. <laughs> hey, what'd you learn to play? You know, that's a wild... Now the hard bit is to mount the engine. I'm mounting a 20cc Aerovat, which is uh, very similar to the DLE 20. Um, first thing I did was to knock the blind nuts out because I'm not going to need those and then put the template on here I'm going to drill and mount it the only problem I'm going to have I think is the fact that it's going to be too long um, for the cowl so I might have to get some shorter posts and maybe take a little bit out of the middle for the um, rear mounted uh, carburetor so um, first thing I'm going to do though is mount it and see what I'm dealing with, see how much length I've got to lose. So the engine's now fitted. There's a few modifications needed. I needed to move it also back closer to the firewall. So I had to cut down the uh, the posts here. 
Also, I fitted the uh, choke, my choke system, as she goes underneath here on a bell crank and I pull it. Oops. As you can see. I set up on a bell crank inside here. And the throttle. Uh, the throttle servos uh, set up as well. As you can see, I had to make a few additional cuts in the firewall. And also, I also uh, always wire wrap the uh, bolt so they don't vibrate loose just helps them from vibes to uh, stop them from vibrating so I'm quite a bit further on now I have uh, the engine in the exhaust the ignitions uh, set on the side there I have my uh, kill switch which is uh, basically operated by a micro servo and it's just a micro switch as you can see I have the uh, voltage regulator under there I'm actually going to use two um, smaller batteries just as, so I have plenty of backup so those two are going to go there or wherever the CG allows them and then there'll be one here for the ignition or around about there fuel tank uh, I've got to buy a smaller fuel tank that comes with a 16 ounce I'm going to put an 8 ounce in there because uh, the gas engine of course uh, sips a lot less fuel and also the uh, cowl cut the cowl out that all, that slips on there now nicely and uh, with the exhaust and the uh, engine cut out, it's quite a bit of cut out there and uh, that's pretty much it, that's as far as I've got so far shouldn't be too long now That's the fuel port. Filters there. That's on the going into the carb. Tanks in there. Loop in the uh, vent and also the filter to stop it uh, sucking in lots of dirt. And then the uh, drain or the vent, should I say, is going to sit hang at the bottom next to where the uh, the choke is So now putting the wings on with the uh, the one center bolt in here and the two clips, one here, one here, they're a real pain to get in and uh, also put a bit of string on so I don't lose them that one has to go in there Now with the prop and the cowl on, 